Wounds become infected because the break in the skin allows bacteria to enter. Infection slows healing. Often bacteria killing ointment is applied to wounds after they have been cleaned. But a study at a Nigerian hospital found that cleaning wounds that were treated with honey, which contains significant quantities of bacteria, heal faster on average than both clean wounds treated with antibiotic ointment and wounds cleaned but not otherwise treated. Question. Which of the following, if true, helps to resolve the apparent discrepancy between the results of the study and the stated facts about wounds, bacteria, infection, and healing? A. Wounds that have simply been cleaned with soap and water and not otherwise treated heal faster than wounds that have been cleaned and then treated without antibiotic ointment. No, that's kind of saying the um, the opposite. It's actually the uh, wounds that have been treated with honey that couldn't have been uh, been able to uh, faster, not the uh, just antibiotic. It has to be with honey. So go ahead and eliminate that. Choice B, the bacteria found in honey are present in much lower concentration than the concentration of bacteria typically present in affected wounds. And applying antibiotic ointment to a wound rarely, if ever, kills all of the bacteria infected the wound. No, that's it's gonna be the opposite. It's, it's that the uh, honey has the uh, concentration level on the bacteria killing. So go ahead and eliminate that because it's saying the lower concentration when it said it had a uh, significant choice C. Honey has properties that inhibit the growth of bacteria and wounds, including the bacteria that honey contains and antibiotic ointment damages sensitive wounds tissue with slow healing. Yes, this matches the explanation. It's kind of like a translation of the um, honey properties. And it also gives a, a strong assumption of the resolve as well. So this is uh, would be a better, better fit choice. Let's go see if the any choices are better. D. The high concentration of sugar in honey inhibits the, the growth of bacteria and wounds, including the bacteria contained in the honey itself. For choice D, no, it's not the concentration of sugar, but rather the significant quantities of bacteria. So it's going to be like it's not going to be the concentration of sugar. It's going to be the concentration of bacteria in honey. So let me choice D. E, the antibiotic ointment used in the study damages sensitive tissue in the wounds, which slows healing, but honey does not have the this effect if the wound has been cleaned. No, it's not mentioned about the antibiotic damage in skin tissue around the wound. That's kind of like an assumption. Also, it does not say honey does not have this effect. It just mentions that uh, without honey, it's known as an infection which slows healing. All that is mentioned is that treated with honey which contains a significant quantities of bacteria healed faster on average than both clean wounds treated with antibiotic ointment and wounds cleaned up, not otherwise treated this means that treatment with honey ointment is an affection um, slow healing stage phase so any treatment without the honey and it's going to be considered in a um, slow healing phase because it's infection. But the ointment with honey makes it that it can be healed. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight it here. The treated with honey makes it that it can be healed faster. And this is um, healed faster between all between both of the clean wounds with antibiotic ointment and clean wounds with uh, otherwise out antibiotic ointment. So honey is the overall better choice on healing faster. Let's see the answer. Answer C, honey has the properties that inhibit the growth of bacteria in wounds, including the bacteria the honey contains, and antibiotic ointment damage sensitive wounds tissue, which slows healing. If this video helped you out, please subscribe so I continue making more. LST 93 Logic Reasoning S2 Question 12. This is going to be about our students. 
in order to understand this logical reasoning stimulus you and answers you're going to have to what i consider being in a position to understand the vocabulary definitions so here we're going to have uh come across evoke and provocative uh, for the first ones could be bring and recall. For the second one, we're gonna have causing anger or annoyance. Our students, great works of art evoke passionate responses in those who view them. Thus, since it is well known in art circles that the provocative work of abstract print painter Ezekiel rarely elicits intensely emotional responses in those who view them. His art is great. From the stimulus here, I have this information I came up with. Um, this could be so. This could be the art student. Great art work evokes a passionate response. Um, here is we got the def, def, uh, vocabularies and definitions de derived coming from point of origin. So this is going to be for the Ezekiel. Key Riley, and that's provocative great artwork evokes an intense emotional response. And we have here we're gonna have two premises: premise one, premise two. Premise one: great works of art evoke passionate response, and those who view them. Premise two: er provoke provocative work elicits intensity emotional response, and those who view them. Conclusion: is the art is great is great so basically uh the symbol for conclusion i'm gonna do three dots those three dots right there simplify the um what you would consider the variables for the oh and it went away right now so let me see if I can go ahead and just draw it one more time so those three dots could be the conclusion symbol for the um this vocabulary here conclusion so p1 plus p2 equals the three dot triangle which is a conclusion a really artwork. <clears throat> I hope this makes sense with the uh, premises being P1, P2. Uh, they could be, this could be utilized as the uh, conditioning as well that uh, draws off the uh, conclusion. So for the um, the information I have in a single sentence, uh, uh, the initials ER for the, for the artist Riley. Great proactive artwork evokes intentional most response from the viewers um, from the viewers. So the question I have here, or I should, should be saying the question that's being brought to us, is going to be which one of the following most accurately describes a flaw in the argument reasoning. For the first answer choice here, we're going to go ahead and take our time right now. Um, it says right here, one of the premises used to support the argument's conclusion assumes the truth of the conclusion. So once again, I hope we have the understanding of the conclusion being that uh, Riley's artwork is great. And also, what I would like to do here is go ahead and point out that um, the premises here are going to be the P1, P2, which is a great work for uh, our work. For the guys who don't know what I'm talking about, talk about right here. Go ahead and put check mark. So, assumes the truth of the conclusion. Basically, they believe that Riley's art, work, art is great. Um, we're going to go ahead and say uh, no at this moment because we're looking for the flaw which is going to be the the error that's going to be a uh, more accurately describing the conditioning and for this for this flaw here we're going to have it's going to be kind of a um, more of a circular reasoning as the um riley's great artwork and the response of a tense emotional of his artwork could be great basically uh just because you get an emotional response uh, emotional um, response doesn't really make your artwork great. It's kind of considered a circular reasoning or a kind of a consequence as the uh, ad harmony logical fallacy. 
So let's go ahead and see if we can remove that here. Question B, the argument treats a condition that is necessary for having a certain quality as if it's also be sufficient for having the quality. That's kind of like the position we're in right now with the um, circular reasoning consequent. It's kind of the um, P equals Q. Basically, uh, e, the Riley's great work equals response emotional intensely. Um, this response, emotional intense, doesn't really necessarily make your great artwork. It's kind of like um, what you consider a uh, logical fallacy. And the logical fallacy that could be uh, considered is ad hominy, it could be circular reasoning, it could be consequent. And when we say circular reasoning, we're basically, basically we're trying to imply here that the um, information P and Q, that it can go back and, back and forth. And basically what we're trying to say is that uh, this information right here, the response and emotion can go back from great artwork. However, that's kind of like not true. Uh, we know that the letter Q is the letter Q is not doesn't mean make it P. P. So that's kind of like the flaw here. And we know that um, great artwork it doesn't need to receive a uh, e emotional intensely uh, s re uh, information. So that's kind of why this would be a better position to argue with because from here you can use the uh, circular reasoning consequent to this. To describe the flaw in the argument. Um, let's see if the other answers are better. C. The argument misapplies a general claim about the members of a class to a typical instance of the class. No, not one member individual versus a member of a group. Remember, look for the best answer here, and the best answers. We're going to look for the uh, what kind of challenges uh, him being a great artwork. D, the argument contains a general is derived from an insufficient number of instances. No, not a common gener generation derived or um, what you would consider coming from. It's, it's not really not sufficient data. E, the argument draws a conclusion that expresses a value judgment from premises that do not involve. No, the argument does draw a conclusion. And it does come from premises within a statement. And uh, this right here could be the premises P1, P2. And this also could be the statement as well as P1 plus P2 equals the conclusion. So the best answer choice we have here is the argument treats a condition, the P1, P2, necessary having a certain quality as if it's also being sufficient for having that quality. So basically what you're trying to say is that um, the artwork is great based on having a passionate response and also having a uh, provocative work elicit intensely emotional response which is not necessarily true that you don't have to have those qualities to make it what you would consider a uh, great artwork and also too great artwork doesn't necessarily fall into these categories as well as um, it could be uh, fall into other categories necessary to as well so it's kind of the um, we consider the um, P equals Q and also kind of consider that the conclusion could be a great artwork and basically kind of considering taking this position here as necessary being the uh, having the quality of being that trait in northern Europe archaeologists have discovered 400,000 years old sharpened wooden poles alongside flint cutting implements and the remains of horses since it is normally assumed that Homo sapiens did not inhabit Europe prior to 200,000 years ago, this discovery efficiently disapproves the widespread belief that the human-like prosecutors of Homo sapiens were entirely gatherers and scavengers and did not hunt. Question: Which one of the following, if true, would add most support to the argument? So we had the information 400,000 years ago, the wooden sharp poles remains of horses. However, we have a percentage of uh, humans, homo sapiens did not inhabit 200,000 years ago, 
which kind of makes this kind of contradictory, even though they said the Homo sapiens uh, are the ones that, that would be able to have the uh, ability to what you would consider do the wooden sharp. So this, what you consider um, information, debunks the um, what you consider the Homo sapiens not happening 200,000 prior. So that means that before 201 or before that, there were no such things because of the discovery 400,000 years ago. So basically what, with these choices A, B, C, D, E, we're going to try to figure out which one add the most support to the argument. A, sharp wooden poles were not used by human-like precursors or homo sapiens for self-defense or to cut or transport scavengers across the cost. Uh, this information would would you consider to be uh, considered the vocabulary where we're going to consider uh, human-like precursors that means non homo sapiens and homo sapiens is what we are so that's going to be strengthener because of um, what that means is that the discovery was used by homo sapiens and that's kind of proof that the non-human precursors were able to utilize the considered wooden poles. So that does help out with the uh, Homo sapiens having the uh, wooden poles discovery 4,000 years ago. Let's see if the other ones are good too, as well. B. Human-like inhabitants of Northern Europe are known to have used stones and wooden stakes as tools more than 400,000 years ago. No, the uh, the vocabulary human-like, it's going to be um, non-homo sapiens, and that kind of contradicts the uh, information with the uh, sharp wooden poles. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate that one. C. Homo sapiens evolved from a human like precursors at least 200 years earlier than is normally assumed. I'm gonna say no just because it's, um, it once again, it's gonna be saying that the uh, the human like precursors at least 200 years earlier, which means that the non homo sapiens precursors were at least 200 years earlier and before that as well, which is kind of like not what we look for, look for the homo sapiens because homo sapiens are going to be the one that had the ability to do the uh, wooden sharpened poles at that time frame, not the human like, so go ahead and eliminate it. Choice D, the human like precursors of homo sapiens develop widely divergent pattern of behavior and the very different ecosystem they inhibited. No, this supports the human like once again and then it also supports the human like behavior so that means the um human like precursors is going to be supported by this information on d so go ahead and eliminate it e prehistoric homo sapiens who adapted hunting as a means of food acquisition did not abandon scavenging and gathering no this supports more human like again doesn't really support the homo sapiens because it's going this information is going to say that it's going to be the uh human like before the homo sapiens and which is not going to uh, support the stimulus so for this one and process elimination process choice a answer sharp wooden poles were not used by human like precursors of homo sapiens for self defense or to cut or transport scavenged carcass carcasses politician or public libraries are are open only on weekdays and generally at times when most children are at school and adult, most adults are at work. Hence, most tax taxpayers and their families have few opportunities to use public libraries. Therefore, no new taxpayers supporting the library system should be approved unless the library hours are changed to better suit taxpayers and their families. Which of the following principles, if valid, would help to justify the politician reasoning? For this information, uh, do not rely on just the conclusion. If you see that it says, therefore, so n no new tax supporting li 
the libraries must should be approved unless the library hours are changed to better suit the taxpayers and their families. Careful, because that's only relying on just what you consider the library system. Because you would consider in the stimulus, they're, they're communicating about the, what you would say, public systems and the public system being available for the taxpayers as well. The method I use to analyze this statement as well is going to be to uh, translate, translate, translate. Uh, if you rely, re, uh, translate the conclusion, it's going to say uh, no new tax supporting unless the library hours. Basically, what that means is going to say that, therefore, new tax supporting the libraries should, uh, should be approved. The library hours are going to change. So with this information and conclusion, the only thing it doesn't mention inclusion is just public. And that's why it can trick you if you don't um, what you consider if you're just using the conclusion, you're not going to be aware of the vocabulary public that they're realizing and the stimulus, which is going to help you out with the answer choices. So let's go ahead and uh, see let's see if we can answer. Uh, a, libraries and other public facilities that serve as an educational purpose should be made as convenient as possible for taxpayers and their families to use. No, nothing but improving new taxes and not only libraries and educational institutions. So let's just go ahead and eliminate that one right off the bat. B, if use of public library public facilities is made more convenient for taxpayers and their families, then new taxes supporting the facilities should be approved. No, more convenient should be choice E is uh, what you consider uh, better wording. So hold on to that one right now. C, Taxpayers who have plenty of time of opportunities to use a public facility should have to pay tax to support their facility. No, taxpayers' money should be used to support. This is kind of uh, saying the um, the opposite of what the taxpayers' money should be used for. So go ahead and get, get rid of it. D, the best way to increase usage of public libraries is to change the library hours for the convenience of most people. No... Um, this is only communicate with the like only public library, so go ahead and eliminate it. E, a new tax supporting a public facility should be approved only when most taxpayers have ample opportunity to use the facility. Correct. Ample is going to be more than enough, so that's why choice E is better than choice B. It kind of matches the exact, the exact conclusion because if you look at the conclusion here. It's going to say therefore no new tax supporting the library system should be approved unless the library hours are changed to better suit taxpayers and their families. If you look at the double negative, no and unless, it kind of matches the conclusion here. And new tax supporting a public facility should be approved only when most taxpayers have ample opportunities to use the facility. Answer E, a new tax supporting a public facility should be approved only when most taxpayers have an ample opportunity to use that facility. If this vi video helped y'all, Please subscribe so I continue making more. The introduction of, of mass production technique is modern industrial economies allow the owners of industries to lower prices because they could employ fewer workers, many of whom they require little training. So intro to mass production technique referring to owners of in industrial. For those guys who are not familiar with the word employ, Employ means to give work to, and industries is going to be the economic activity processing raw materials and manufacturing goods. The lower prices allow workers to buy goods that previously would not have been able to afford. So for that premise, um, we're going to go ahead and go to the next uh, sentence. But since the since jobs for workers with little training are more vulnerable to elimination than those for more highly trained workers. So basically, it's saying that the uh, conclusion that the uh, lower the prices premise few workers and those workers have low training. Conclusion. The few workers are able to buy goods because of this uh, choice and how they cho chose to lower prices.
so the last sentence here, vulnerable to limit for work, rather highly skilled. So basically, um, trying to come up with a, um, which the final most logical completes the argument. So we're going to say that the uh, owner industries are what you consider in a position to um, eliminate work and the workers have a, what you consider a uh, sense of vulnerability. So to keep up, they decided to uh, lower the prices. And by lowering the prices, they were hiring uh, what you consider um, workers who were low training, unskilled, and these few workers could uh, purchase the goods. So basically, trying to find a um, how would they logic and complete this, and that's kind of like the way I look at it right now is that the uh, industry owners, basically, um, because of the decision on what you consider on lowering prices, their method um, has a vulnerability to the workers on their position of having that job, kind of like their essence of security. So let's try to see if we could find a sentence here or an answer choice that kind of matches what we're communicating about. A, highly trained workers have more purchasing power in modern industry economies than workers who are less trained. No, highly skilled workers uh, do not have more purchasing power, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. The introduction of mass production techniques has decreased benefits for workers and as it has increased the profit for owners of industrial industries. No, it's close, but the benefiting being reduced or eliminated is not really what's being reduced or eliminated. It's kind of like the uh, workforce, if that makes more sense. Even the highest paid employee in minor industry economies are never able to achieve job security. No. Not the highest paid employees are the ones who are being impacted. D, a source of increased purchasing powers for workers in modern industry economies that also undermine their job securities. That's kind of, kind of where we're matching up here with the owners of the industry um, having their powers of purchase. It kind of gives the uh, workers a um, undermine which challenges their uh, work position level as far as being able to secure that work for a commitment. So that answer kind of matches up. Let's see if E's better. The percentage of workers who can afford to purchase goods produced by modern industry techniques is shrinking. No, the workers who can pur purchase goods is not shrinking. That's kind of not the way uh, logic you complete. So between E and D, D's definitely better. I'm going to take choice E out and see what we left with the answer. And we got a correct D, a source of increased purchasing powers for workers in modern industrial Economies are also undermines their job security, which matches up exactly what we said before with the stimulus. Child psychologists, psychologists have found that most children are under the age of six are egocentric and selfish in the attitude towards animals. Ordinarily, it is only between the age of six and nine that children begin to understand that animals are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs. Hence, most children sh should not have pets until they are at least at six years old. Question. The child psychologist's conclusion follows logically if which one of the following is assumed. A. Most children who are egocentric and selfish in their attitude towards animals rely on others to take care of their pets. No, not relying on others is the assumption made by the stimulus. That's not what they're communicating about. B. Children who are old enough to understand the animals are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs should be allowed to have pets. No, addressing who rather than saying who should not. Students made more of a ch choices of who should not. See, most children who are egocentric and selfish in their attitude towards animals do not have pets. No, this was saying most in the sample group representation. Rather, we're looking for the whole group in the sample representation. Most children are egocentric and selfish in their attitude towards their pets and do not have understanding that their pets are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs. 
No, nothing about the ownership or non-ownership of pets. That's more what the stimulus is communicating about. E, the own children who should have pets are those who understand that their pets are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs. Yes, this is the only cha choice that tells us about the whole group representation in the data. Also correct about the assumption made in the stimulus. So this would be where you consider more of the uh, correct answer based on the information what's communicating about with the ownership of the pets. Answer E, the only children who should have pets are those who understand that their pets are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs. If this video helped you out, please subscribe so I continue making more. The average tax refund received by taxpayers in use tax preparation service is about 50% higher than the average refund by those who do not. So if you want a large refund, you should use tax preparation service. Which one of the following arguments exhibits flawed reasoning sim most similar to the flawed reasoning exhibited by the argument above? So if you want to have a high income, you should invest heavily in the stock market. So if you want a large refund, you should use tax preparation. So far, so good. We'll leave that alone. So if your company produces publications, then you should establish an in-house print shop. It doesn't really say high publication or high income, so go ahead and remove it. So if you want lower your insurance premium, you should try to reduce your risk of lung cancer. That's communicate about going the other route, opposite. We get rid of it. So if you have a larger than average estate managed, you should get your own lawyer. Let's keep that one for now. So if you want to purchase, so if you do not want to receive calls from telemarketers, you should not purchase anything from them. That's kind of like not what this implying. This communicating about having a large refund and also using it as a tax preparation to receive that. This com communicating about avoiding a phone call by avoiding purchases. So no. So these two are parallel for this. Let's see if we dive in a little bit deeper. Uh, a, people who invest heavily in the stock market generally have a higher income than those who do not. That kind of matches what we're saying about people who use tax preparation service is about 50% higher than those of the average refund who do not. D, people with a larger average real estate to manage usually find it helpful to have their own lawyer. So if you want to have a larger than average estate to manage, you should get your own lawyer. So that's communicating about having a person in law as a way to have a large and average estate. And this was communicating about having a, um, a higher income by having stock market. So this is communicating about tax preparation services, which is more of a um, materials, information, data, use like software to get the uh, program going. This is more of a stock market, which is more of a, a software program, database online to get it going, to have a higher income. And also higher income is also kind of like a, um, a larger refund and base. So this is more similar to the stimulus. So let's go ahead and choose that for now. And choice for this one's gonna be answer A. People who invest heavily in the stock market generally have a higher income than people who do not. So if you want to have a high income, you should invest heavily in the stock market. Another reason why choice D doesn't work out, their community call it state, which is property, and um, their community come about having a refund, which is more of a um, consider higher income. So this one's D is more about properties, so, so that's why choice A makes it better. If this video helped you out, please subscribe so I continue making more. In an experiment. Each of 200 randomly selected people was videotaped while describing action packed experts from previously unfamiliar cartoons. Half the subjects were allowed to gesture while speaking, and the other half were not. Those who gestured spoke more quickly and repeated themselves less. This indicated that gesturing helped speakers quickly find the phrase they want. Question Which one of the following, if assumed, enables the conclusion? In the argument to be properly drawn.
A. Ordinarily, almost everyone regularly gestures when speaking quickly and with little repetitions, regardless of the topic being discussed. Choice A is going to be incorrect because it's missing the purpose of collecting data and information. It doesn't communicate about collecting the data information. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and uh, minimize it. We're looking for information that's going to be related to the um, gesturing while speaking. And this information that they're collecting for is kind of like they quickly phase what their research speakers want. They want the uh, to find the phrase as quickly as possible. Let's go to choice B. The cartoons were chosen by th those who conducted the experiment and were selected from a variety of sources. This information is considered irrelevant about the cartoons collected for the experiment. It's not really the uh, purpose of the uh, passage was dealing with the uh, selections of the cartoons. So that's kind of like irrelevant at the moment. C. Any form of behavior correlated with quicker speech and less repetition in speech helps speakers find the phrase they want quickly. This is going to be the correct answer. It's kind of uh, resummarizing the conclusion as far as uh, the conclusion is going to be indicated that gesturing helps speakers quickly find the phrase they want. And that's kind of like the goal of the researchers. They want look for a quickly phase. And this is kind of the information what they describe in choice C. Let's see if the an other answers are better. D. Any form of behavior that helps speakers quickly find the phrase they want also enables them to speak more quickly and repeat themselves less than they would if they were not engaged in that behavior. No, this is kind of like the opposite of what they're saying. They're actually looking for the uh, quick s speech in the engaged behavior. This one's communicating on the opposite, saying not. Choice C is definitely a better word than D, so go ahead and eliminate D. E. Of the subjects who were allowed to gesture, those who spoke the most quickly and repeated themselves least were among those who gestured the most. No, the goal of the researcher is to quickly find the phrase, not gesture. This choice E is communicating more of the gesture being the goal. That's not really the goal of the researchers. The goal is to uh, quickly find the phrase the research speakers want. So for the assumption based on the conclusion or enabling the uh, information coming from the conclusion is going to be choice C. Let's see if our answer is correct. Answer C. Any form of behavior correlated with quicker speech and less repetition in speech helps find speakers find the phrase they want quickly. If this video helped you out in getting the answer, please subscribe so I continue making more. Committee Chairperson no new course will be approved for next year's schedule unless a proposal for it has already been received either by the committee or by Dean Wilson. Dean Wilson has received only one new course proposal, and all the new course proposals that the com committee has received are for upper-level courses. It has been decided that beginning next year, all upper courses will have prerequisites. Question. Which one of the following can be properly inferred if the chair's person statements are true? Right, we have the information gathered that chairperson is going to be dean. The first premise is that committee or dean has the right to approve new courses. The second premise is that the dean receives one new upper level course so for those two uh, premises put together the conclusion is going to be starting next year all upper level courses will have prerequisites so we're wondering what can be affirmed or assumed about the statement the only thing we know right now is that prerequisite classes before upper level courses so one class must be a prerequisite meaning one prerequisite class at the minimum. That's all we could assume at this moment. A. If there are no new upper level courses next year, then there will be no new courses next year that will have prerequisites. No, this means there will be an absence of classes. B. If all of the new courses next year are upper level courses, then all of the new courses proposed to the committee will have been approved. 
This choice does not have one prerequisite at the minimum, so go, go ahead and eliminate it. C. If there is more than one new course next year, at least one of them will be a course that has a prerequisite. Yes, one prerequisite class is offered at the minimum. D. If the new course proposal that Dean Wilson received for, for is for an upper level course, then all courses offered next year will have prerequisites. None of the classes offered will be a prerequisite, so choice C is a better choice, so go ahead and eliminate D. E. If there are no new upper level courses next year, then the new course proposal that was submitted to Dean Wilson will have been approved. No doesn't contain the prerequisite course. So by process elimination, uh, the choice C is better information that could be um, what you can say match up with our conclusion at the one prerequisite class at the minimum. So choose choice C. Answer C. If there is more than one new course next year, at least one of them will be a course that has a prerequisite. Do you look Korean? Process and a bony part of the Millions elbow. The shorter the olocrinan process, the faster the forelimbs can typically be moved. Predators, mammals, just move their forelimbs very quickly when attacking prey, and thus generally have short olocrinan process. It has recently been found that the extinct mammals, megatherium, had a short Olocrinin process, hence in all probability, Megatherium was a predator. Question: The argument most vulnerable to criticism on which one of the following grounds? A. It fails to address the possibility that the pro that the most mammals with shorter Olocrinin process have not been predators. This information would weaken the stimulus because the stimulus is, is saying that the Olocrian shorter is faster and basically predators need the uh, the O and S to attack and the, that, that the Mogorthians are also a predator because of this. So this question right here, A, would definitely position, put him in a weaker position. Basically, it's saying that the um, could, it could be non-predators, meaning they are not attackers. So that could be a possibility that, that the um, have not been predators as well. So let's go and select that one. See if B is better. It takes granted that the only reason predators need to move their forearms quickly is to attack a prey. The vocabulary only to attack means 100%, so there's no room for not attack. You can go ahead and remove it because that's going to actually be a strengthener because it's giving it the uh, the information is to attack. We're looking for a weakener. C, it overlooks the possibility that the megatheriums could have been a successful predator even if it did not have a short olocrine process. No strengthener because it's saying that even if it doesn't have that feature, it will still consider be a successful predator. So regardless, it will still be a predator no matter what, which is just a strengthener. D. It takes for granted that on average, the olocrinian process of extinct mammals were no shorter than those of living mammals are extinct. No, that's kind of relevant with the uh, extinction of the uh, mammals compared to the ones that are living right now. If they are the same, relatively the same, how how does that really change the information? So you can go ahead and get rid of it. E. It fails to address the possibility that a longer looking process may confer some other advantage, such as greater strength. Go ahead and eliminate it. That's more of a strengthener again, as as you can tell at the end, where it says such a greater strength. So that's just meaning more strength to uh, be in a position of stronger. So the only one we can say is just choice A by simplifying saying that they can be uh, utilized for for non-predator or it can be affiliated with non-predators. So go ahead and choose A as the answer. Answer A, it fails to address the possibility that most mammals with short olocrinian process have not been predators.
If this video helped you out, please subscribe so I continue making more.